get all sorts in here. Oh, my God. OK. One more. I know. Last pitch. Entrepreneur's coming. OK, here we go. This is going to be a good one. Here we go. What I'm looking for in Shark Tank is the right type of person. Lots of people apply for Shark Tank. You get all sorts in here. Howdy, Sharks. My name is Capital M. I've come here today looking for an investment of $20 for 20% of my product. When I was 12 years old, my high school English teacher told the class to write an assignment of what you wanted to be when you grew up. And most people wrote footy player, fireman, astronaut. But I wrote, I wanted to be a famous drummer who one day played drums for people like Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie. When I read that out to the class, everybody started laughing. <laughs> I went on to play drums not only for Lionel Richie, but Ricky Martin, Rihanna, Chris Brown, Kimbra, and Grammy award-winning guitar player Vernon Reed from Living Colour. That was literally a dream come true. So what does this story have to do with the product I'm pitching here today? Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're gorgeous. <laughs> I just really like telling that story. Now, the good news for you is the next story is all about my product. So let me set the scene for you. I'm on stage in front of 30,000 people doing a drum solo. It went something like this. song had a backing track, which meant I had to wear headphones. So I go to grab my headphones, but the lead's all tangled. It's like Spaghetti City. Ah! <laughs> I looked for a solution to this problem, but I couldn't find one, so I invented one myself. I call these the hoo-ha headphones. Why? Because with the press of a button, biggity bam! Wow! They're creating quite a fuss. <laughs> This design won a competition held by Officeworks called Pitch Your Big Idea, beating out thousands of other entries. I have patent protection on it in Australia and the US, and I'm looking to license it. So once again, I've come here today looking for $20 for 20% of my product. And that ain't no joke. <laughs> Can you bring those headphones over? Yeah, oh, yes, sir. It's just a mock prototype. Oh, it's just a mock prototype, okay. The headphone industry is like a $13 billion a year industry. Marketwatch.com reckons by 2022 it's going to be $18 billion. Why not wireless? That okay. removes all the cables, Yeah, right? I have used wireless and I just don't think... It's been around for a long time, but I just don't think it's reliable. Even with, like, wireless internet and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. I'm a huge fan of certain TV shows, and I reckon you've stole yourself after another drummer who's an absolute hero of mine. Animal from the Muppets. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> so you want twenty dollars for twenty percent of your invention, and then you need a bit of help trying to get it to market. Is I think it's a licensing thing, Andrew. You know. See if we can find a way of partnering with someone who has distribution, has manufacturing, and you just take a licensing royalty. That's what I think it is. I just think licensing the best for me because if I had a strategic partner, which is what I want to walk away from today, I can create ideas, I can pay them, and then we can just sort of like um, share the IP, and then you guys can do the magic that you do. Who in the space do you think we should go and approach? Apple, because they own Beats. We go and see Apple or yep. Beats. Um, what's the deal going to look like, do you think? Um, you'll get your $20 back in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let's not take this too seriously. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. He's animal from the Muppets. He's crazy. He doesn't miss a beat. <laughs> oh, do do. Capital M, I don't know how to help. You're dead right. You know, this is a, a licensing play. I'm, I'm going to wish you all the best. I'm out. I really do hope you get a deal with him, mate. I'm a bit like Steve. I'm not in the licensing game, right, okay. so, so I, I can't help you. I'm out. Thank you so much. Part of my investment strategy is to find 
unique products and services, but they've got to be coupled with really good, fun people that I want to work with. Thank you. And I no doubt could work with you. Okay. But I'm not sure I'll add the value you're hoping for. Okay. So, me, I'm out. Good luck. Thank you so much. Naomi. Hi. I'm glad to hear that you're in Melbourne. Oh. Because the MAPS Melbourne Accelerator Program, there are some fabulous audio engineers in there who've produced a most incredible set of earphones. Oh, right. out Completely outperform the beat ones. Right. And I would really like to introduce you to them because if you can integrate it into a piece of Australian technology, that if you work together, then actually we've got something unique for our country that we could be exporters on. Right. Oh, well, I think you'd be a bit of fun to work with. I'm in. Yep. I got $20, so I'm ready. We'll see if oh. we can get you to market. There might be a bidding war Okay. Or maybe we should split this deal. What do you think? I'm into splitting it. How do you feel, Andrew? Yeah, I, look, I'd just love to get you to market. You know, I don't think it's worth a shark fight for 20 bucks. So do you want to sell 40% for 40 bucks? How about we do 15 bucks each, 30%? Yeah, yeah, I think we should do that. I'll Let's do the deal. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. And do I get a free a free drumming lesson? Free drum lesson. Free drumming lesson. Well thank you. Okay. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks so much. much. I appreciate it. Right. Cue the successful deal music. Yeah. Yeah. Next into the tank is an entrepreneur who thinks his business is a safe bet. I hope the sharks have brought their fat wallets along. I think I'm going to nail it. Good evening, sharks. My name is Andrew Leary. I'm 53 years of age and I live in Sydney. Tonight, we're looking for $390,000 for 10% of the Buckle Me Up enterprise. Thanks for the opportunity to introduce Buckle Me Up, which was conceived by a group of firemen some years ago who had seen firsthand the tragedy of children being killed or injured in car accidents that were unbuckled. There's over one billion cars in the world today on our roads. And 98% of those cars have seatbelt warning devices for the front seat. Yet 87%, 87% of cars don't have them in the back seat where our precious cargo travel. Buckle Me Up is a worldwide patented, first ever wireless retrofit seatbelt alarm and safety system that simply clicks on your seatbelt buckle like an e-tag. Buckle Me Up is paired with your smartphone via a free app that will alert the driver of the car if the person in the back seat unbuckles. Buckle Me Up can also be used in a number of other applications, such as in school buses. So sharks, buckle me up, you'll never look back. There you go. <laughs> well done. Hey, that's nice. Well done, Andrew, and that's uh, valuing your business at $3.9 million, 390000 for 10%. Wow. So uh, I guess you better show us how it works. Well, what I'd love is to invite two of the sharks to sit in the back seat. So who'd like to come forward? Well, you're little. I'm going in the back seat with Janine. Does buckle me up include shut me up? <laughs> so for the purposes of this exercise, Steve and Janine, they're my children in the back seat. <laughs> I now hit the app, and this will tell me through a green signal that two of my passengers are buckled up. So now, Steve, you're a naughty boy. You've dropped your toy, and without telling Daddy, you have to pick your toy up. So now what we see is a visual on my smartphone. Because Janine looks up to her older brother, monkey see, monkey do, so, Janine, you unbuckle. And we'll see Janine's also go red. Oh, my God. These kids are out of control. Hey, I like it. It's simple. It worked. 
I can remember driving down 30, 30 years ago with a five-year-old son in the back, and I turn a corner and suddenly the back door of my car opens, and my son, who's five years of age, has taken his seatbelt off because his hat has fallen on the floor. He grabs hold of the seatbelt. I'm hitting the brakes, and I get out of the car, and he's under the back wheel, and it's this far away from going over it. And I will never forget that, that vision. Scary. This is a great product. There's, there's an amazing problem out there. Yeah, 100%. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Good, thank you. Is this product market ready? And does it work 100% of the time? This product is 100% market ready. Uh, and we have, have it fully accredited. What have you spent to date? Well, to date, we've spent over $2 million, which was in my home, which I've sold to put into this business. Wow. OK. Hello, Vicar. That's a lot. Do you have any sales so far, Andrew? Yeah, we've got a, an order from a large bus company. We have ordered 200 um, buses to be fitted out. So how much is that in dollars? $1.9 million. Wow. So are we investing in the uh, everything? We're investing in the operating company, the IP. Is it, is it a whole group or are there parts that sit outside the investment? OK. What you're investing is, is Buckle Me Up, PTY, LTD. Yep. Which has the sole and exclusive licence to use the patent worldwide for a seatbelt application. So we don't own the licence. We don't... We have the use of it. We don't own the IP. So you own the patents. Yep. So that's in one company. Yep. And then another company is licensed, which is called Buckle Me Up, to use it. So this one is paying royalties to that one yes. to use it. Yes. Correct? Yes. yes. How much is that? It's a per, um, per purchase. Yeah. At this point, to start off with, it's 5%. So who owns this company? M myself. OK, so you're offering us 10% of another company. Correct. That's not going to fly, right? No. You, you're basically asking us to pay you for this but get no actual effective ownership of it. And we you've taken a 5% clip. It's actually, it's actually a poor deal. So in actual fact, we could together do a deal. We could be burning cash 100 miles an hour. So we could be losing money and you're going, that's OK, I'm still making 5%. You could be making millions and we could be losing money. The reason why I didn't put a hold of spot is because of the uncertainty associated with going forward with the yet to be completed. No, no. You thought that you could take money off the top line and you'd be OK and the risk is with us. You sit on the beach, you do nothing for it, you get 5% of the sales and we take all the risks. And remember, I've got 90% skin in it as well. So if you're hurting at 10%, I'm hurting at 90%. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you're fine. You've got No, you're not. Right. Because you've still got your 5% off the top. So what you're basically saying is you need to feel sorry for me, right? But this is a harp, the smallest one in the world playing for you, right? For your heart, for your broken heart. That doesn't matter. This is investment, right? Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to do that to us? Why are you trying to do that to an investor? Why be tricky? Whenever a tricky structure gets set up, the first thing in my spidey senses go, Something's being hidden here. I'm, uh, someone's out to do me a disservice. Andrew, I, I can tell you where I am at. In business, I think if things are really struggling and they're, they're just the grinding its gears, often there's a reason. And in this case, I actually think the reason might be you. You've got an unusual structure and just Looking at you and listening to you, I asked myself, could I work with you? And I'm sorry, the answer is no. So for those reasons, I'm out. Um, I'll tell you where I am. When I work with people, I like it all to be nice and transparent and upfront. And if I have to dig for things, I can't work with you. I'm out. Sure, thanks. Would you sell the whole company? Beg your pardon? Would you sell the whole company? I believe that for me to invest money in this business, I prefer to have a very, very large say. That means owning it. As in the parent company as well? I I'm talking about everything I need to operate this. I'm talking about... Yeah, sure, I'd be interested in selling that. So I'll make an offer for 100% of the business. 
I'm willing to pay you 1.5 million bucks. Andrew Leary is asking for $390,000 for 10% of his seatbelt safety business. His complex business structure... So we don't own the IP. ..has caused two of the sharks to bow out. But Steve has made an offer of $1.5 million for 100% of his business. I prefer to have a very, very large say. That means owning it. I, I want to thank, thank you for the offer. I want to see if there are any counter-offers. I'm more than happy to, to, for you to entertain the amateur, amateur hour down the end there. When I do business with people, it is actually a partnership. This is like a first date, but then we go on a journey together and ultimately we want to get married and create something great. At the core, all business is based on trust. So for this deal, I'm out. Thank you. Three sharks are out, two sharks left. Andrew, I think your product is very relevant. But for me, today, it's not an investment, so I'm out. Thank you. What are you going to do? There's a lot of things to think about, but I understand I'm here to, to consider offers, and Stephen's made me one. We actually are here to do deals, yep. not just consider them. The clock is ticking here, because the, the more I look at these numbers, I get concerned as to why, why haven't... Why hasn't this amazing, life-saving thing actually done what it's supposed to do? I think his little feet are starting to shake. Right, you're not in this deal. There's been a range of reasons, right, for that, which I don't know yet. Believe in yourself, Andrew. So, Steve, what, what I would uh, accept would be a $2 million... Um, 100% take out. If anyone can take this business, it's Steve. I really believe that. And he might even give me a job. That's for discussion, maybe. No, I'm not going to negotiate against myself. You should have kept one of these four in the game. So uh, if you're at two, we're probably not going to meet. Is that where we're at? Yeah. Mate, I wish you all the best. I'm Thanks. out. Thanks, Steve. Good luck. Yeah, Andrew. Good I luck. I hope it works. It's a great product. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cheers. Wow. <laughs> Andrew, how are you feeling? That was a roller coaster ride in there. Yeah, no, look, it was uh, it was interesting. It got pretty brutal in there at times. How did you handle that? Yeah, look, I tried to, to answer as honestly as I can. Overall, the deal couldn't be done. But that's life. You move on. I think it was a cheeky offer. I don't think it was cheeky. Next, you've been going for 18 months yeah. and you're got $4 million in sales. Yeah. The biggest deal in Australian Shark Tank history... That's a first. ..is on the line. You've got an absolute pair between your legs. And it has the sharks out for blood. Clearly you don't believe in it. Please, no, I'm, Please. I'm speaking. Are you in or out? I'm Are speaking. You in or not? Next in the tank is an experienced entrepreneur from Sydney who's hoping to wow the sharks with his eco-friendly and innovative product. I'm feeling exceptionally nervous. This is our livelihood, this business. We've lived it and breathed it for the last three years. For the amount of money I'm asking for, I hope the sharks don't get scared off. Hi, my name is Kane. I'm the CEO of iCapsulate. 13 years ago, I made a clear and conscious decision to turn my life around and build a strong and successful company. I'm here today to ask you for two and a half million dollars for 15% of my company. <laughs> so that was 2.5? It is. Wow. <laughs> for okay. 15%. I'll go hard or go home. All right, get into it. Okay. 
A Capsulate um, is a coffee company specialising in capsules, pods and roasted beans. We're the largest in the Southern Hemisphere. We produce currently 35 million capsules and pods per annum. Uh, we have contracts with Australia and New Zealand's largest coffee companies. Uh, I'm expanding the formats of iCapsulate next year, which will increase that another 20 million pieces. And I'm still to execute two contracts by the end of this year, which will also add another 20 million pieces to the business. The thing with iCapsulate is in June, we'll launch a world first biodegradable, hermetically sealed capsule. <laughs> The difference between this and other capsules is ours is biodegradable, so we can drop it straight in the garden. The other thing with our capsules is we, we produce the best. We're 35% higher coffee solids than any other manufacturer in Australia. We have the lowest oxygen residual, meaning the freshest coffee capsule as well. So what I would like to do is let you taste the difference between a craft and a good cup of coffee. I capsulate <laughs> being yes. a good one. OK, Kane, and that was $2.5 million for 15% of Which your Which value is it at? 16.6 million. Yes. How long ago did you start this business? Uh, one and a half years ago. Wow, well, what a great result that is. Wow. This is the first lot. What's this one? This is the one that you don't want to drink. Okay, just have good. a smell first. Good to know. Just so you know, um, as, a, as a point of difference. It smells revolting. Thank you. OK, so this is the bad one. This is evil coffee. Evil coffee. Yeah, it's bitter. Um, you'll notice the capsule's slightly different, and I'll bring some capsules around for you to have yeah, a look thank at. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. So the first thing you'll notice is the crema difference in the colour, and I should hope the flavour. Oh, thank you, Chief. Oh, yeah, you can see it. Yeah. It's massive. What was your past life? Because you've only been going 18 months. Yeah, so always coffee. My mum was a chef, so instead of working in the kitchen with her, um, I said I'll, I'll stay out and do the bar and coffee. Through school and everything, I continued doing coffee, and I set up a coffee roasting company. Did that for a couple of years, and I was offered um, the technical position for Dow Egberts, so I ran all their technical division for them. And then Gloria Jeans poached me from there, and I ran Gloria Jeans worldwide for their coffee and technical. Wow. So I launched Cafe Italy for Gloria Jeans into Woolworths, um, and seeing the success of that, I decided to start my own company. What are you most proud of? This is um, my partners and my life. Like, we're, we've invested everything into it. We've lived and breathed the factory. We installed the machinery ourselves. There's $16 million worth of machinery currently on the floor. Well, coffee is our life. So your business is not just putting your own coffee in capsules, it's putting other people's coffee in Correct. capsules as well. So Correct. are you like the Tetra Pak of capsules? Yes. So our customers, we can say all of Australia's leading manufacturers or coffee companies. All the big coffee brands yeah. that we would know. Yep. So what are your sales? So 37 and a half million at the moment, pieces per annum. Talk to your revenues, please. So um, last year was four million. Four million dollars, that is very impressive. That's very nice. Okay. You've been going for 18 months yep. and you've got four million dollars in sales. Yes. Well done. Clearly, you've got everything you need to run a good business. What extra do you need from a shark type investor? I was offered $25 million for the business probably six months ago and I said no, because I, I believe there's a lot more in it. Marketed correctly, taken through the right fields and like to, to apply, put a different application to it, to fit coffee into it, uh, I think that's exactly what a shark would offer. Kane, you are um, very brave. Um, also, if you've got courage, and courage to actually be all in. Yeah. So I admire your passion, your courage, and your bravery. <laughs> Unfortunately, I own a coffee business and we sell coffee. I have a conflict of interest. I'm out. OK. Thank you. Well, I like the space. I think you're amazing. I'll make you an offer. I don't like the valuation. I think there's a risk involved. So I'm going to offer you two and a half million dollars for 25% of your company. Okay. And I'm going to work on making the other 75% very valuable. Okay. So Kane, after the uh, upfront with you, yeah. um, I cannot see even where Andrew's sitting. And, and, and my offer, seriously, is two and a half million for 40% based on the work and the numbers you've told me about. Okay. I will give you the mentoring and the coaching support you need 
to go exponential with this business. Thank you. I'm buying your growth rate. You've started from nothing and in 18 months you got to a phenomenal space. But I will counter that little conversation there by saying I am the scale-up guy. I, I am so experienced in taking companies from small to large. So, you know, but he's a tea of, he's a tea of being an Australian-based yeah. mentor, which is what you need, I'd be there for you. So, so if you want to take a business that solves pig's ears and have itself look more pig's ears, mate, Glenn's your bloke, right? What? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm exceptionally curious, and these are these inferior coffee pods you're selling against. What is it, their cost of manufacture? The cost of manufacturing is slightly higher, not a licensed system and not protected by patents. So the inferior one, which does things in an inferior way, yep. is more expensive. Yeah, and the, the thing that doesn't is, make any sense, right? I'll, I'll explain. We have the ability to roast the coffee in house. So, one, you save the GST because they can buy the green coffee off us. There's no GST on the product and sold. But it's also the road cost of getting the coffee there and getting it back to DC where we can keep it all in house. I, I don't believe you. Because <laughs> someone has the inferior product pods yeah. thing and does exactly everything the way you do it now. Okay, but with so clearly anyway, you don't please believe no, it. Please no, please no. I am speaking. Are you in or out? I'm speaking. Are you, are you well, in or out? For Christ's sakes, it's my money. We're here to talk to the bloke. Well, we have so to go somewhere else. We're talking about Glenn and Andy. I haven't got all day. Exactly. Do you, you need to go somewhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> you've, you've actually identified this as a $2 million investment, right? So, and on, two and a half? I've made a two and a half. So th th these do require appropriate questioning. So if you're trying to rush the process, why? Are you trying to rush the process? And we're talking about a $16.6 million valuation. For God's sake, it's money, people, and this is business. So I'm on the, I'm on the fence. I'm going to continue to think. But it's two and a half million bucks. I'm going to take as much bloody time as I want. Excuse me. OK, Naomi, let's go. I was going to come in with a different offer than you've already got from Glenn and from Andrew, yeah. because I do know that you do need the marketing, and I value my marketing skills. Yeah. So the offer that I'm going to put you is $2.5 million for 33 and a third percent of your business. Steve? Um, I'm having trouble making the numbers. Okay. I, am. I think what you've, 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 we've all said it, you've done fantastically, right? I've got so much admiration. You've got I just an absolute pair between your legs to go out there and put 16 point something million bucks of gear in a, in a, in a, in a, in a factory to, to start roasting, to attack the market, to take the market share you have is, is, is really fantastic. Uh, so I'm trying to understand how we can take this from the, the, the size it is now. I have a real, real trouble with that. Okay. So on that, you've got three offers there. I actually think they're terrible offers and you should ditch them all. But there, there's three offers on the table. I wish you all the best, mate, but, but I'm out. Thank you, Steve. All of that and he's out. Is there someone you want to talk to? Uh, oh, fiance. Yeah. Thank you. Go have See a chat. A little bit nervous as shit. <laughs> I can see. Uh, yeah. It's difficult. Like it's it's. They're all. They all have really, really good attributes, and like I'm sort of stuck between um, them. Can you get the percentage lower? <laughs> um, okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go smash it. Hello. Hi. So this is Alessia. Um, my better half and, and the boss of the boss. Alessia, beautiful name. Thank you. Well, you must be very proud of him, huh? Building a business like that so quickly. Well, being a better half, I know I could do better. <laughs> <laughs> you, mean, you, mean you, you mean you worked just as hard as he did? Oh, Probably harder. Trying to do my best, yeah. Fantastic. Kane, you've had three offers, and that's the biggest amount of money ever been offered in Shark Tank. Two and a half million bucks. Okay. That's a first. It's a first. <laughs> So where do you land? Um, Naomi came with, with basically the ability to market with us and also being local. Glenn with the ability to upscale. Um, and yourself, Andrew, you have the ability for the US. And, and it was really difficult. Um, where we've come to, one, um, I, I had to still see it was 
we're, we're sitting with Andrew. Um, I spoke to Alessia and it was to see if you could do 20% for the 2.5. So they're out and I'm in, yeah. and you want me to come back at 20%. Is, yeah. that the, is that the bottom line? Yes. It's two and a half million dollars. Yes, it is. I'm buying a big growth story. How about 22 and a half? Go! Let's take it to the world. Well done, Thank mate. you. Oh, nice to meet you. Job, you mate. Well done. Thank you. Right, good. Hello. Good to Lovely to meet you. Thank you, guys. What an awesome deal. I know. <laughs> Great. Well, I'm going to have the best coffee in town. You are. You know, at the end of the day, what's, what's important is what the business is worth in two or three years. Oh, my God. That's the biggest deal in Shark Tank history. I know, it's, it's crazy and I, I think by the time it died at Jess and we're in the car and we're heading home, I think it's just going to all sort of hit you at once. I think she's going to have to drive. <laughs> How are you going to celebrate after making history? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe an espresso martini, a few of them. Yeah, very much so. Congratulations, Thank guys. Thank you very much. See you. See ya. That's awesome. That is the record deal in Shark Tank history. And it's a risk, but you know, I just love his competence and I love his growth rate. Mo, Andrew and Zach have a business that cashes in on the millennial mindset. One in eight university students are already using our product and it's something obviously that struck a chord. We're disrupting a very old industry and it's really exciting. People want to see change and I think we're that change. Hello, predators of the sea. We're Cupe, and we're here to change banking for millennials. We're here seeking $380,000 in exchange for 8.4% equity in our business. Sharks, traditional banking as we know it has been old and has not changed for the past decade. With poor customer service, uh, lack of innovation, and generally high fees that people don't like to pay. Many people stay because there's no better option. We're here to change that. Cupe will be a bank that you love. We're going to build things from the ground up. So things like live push notifications about transactions to uh, personalized financial services. Rather than having loyalty cards, for example, we'll automatically apply discounts based on the things that they buy in the past. We are already working with over 150,000 university students in our Marketplace app where students can buy and sell things on campus, like textbooks, tickets to events, and merchandise. One out of eight university students already has Cupay, and now we're rolling out the Cupay MasterCard, which will allow students to spend their money on campus, off campus, and online. Putting that card together with the Cupay app, we'll be providing the banking experience that should have been. Will it be a credit card or a prepay card or both? It acts like a debit card. Since we released the card two weeks ago, 5,000 students have signed up and we're on our way to deliver 3,000 cards in the next three weeks. So where do you come in? Well, we've already raised $620,000 for marketing and operations and we're seeking to raise a further $380,000 to help grow our business all over Australia. Sharks, the banking industry has been without competition since dinosaurs roamed the Earth. And now that's all about to change. We are the asteroid that's coming in hot. Um, thank you very much. Who are you? Uh, I'm Mo. I am Zeki. I'm Andrew. So who's the boss? Uh, Zach and I are co-founders, but Zach is the CEO. This is our second successful business that we founded together. We started right out of uni, building apps for other people and seeing them achieve their dreams. We wanted to build an app for ourselves and that was the beginnings of Cupay. So why do you think banking's broken? When was the last time you visited a bank branch? Um, most people will tell you it's, you know, either they've never done it or they don't enjoy it. So where we come in, and certainly when we work with these students, we have a very strong understanding about how they spend their money, where they spend their money, and what they actually want when they do spend that money. 
Can I just ask you a really fundamental question? One of the things I love about my bank is they have a banking licence. Of course. And I know that I can trust them. So you've got a banking licence. We're a corporate authorised representative um, of an Australian financial services licence holder. So while we're not a bank just yet, the services that we provide at this stage certainly fit within the legal regulations within Australia. I'm struggling with your differentiation in the marketplace. I'm a, I'm a customer of a major big four bank. Of course, yes. Everything you've described, I'm getting now from them. So other than a really good marketing play, please give us the lowdown on why this is such a great opportunity. That's I, right. I think I'm missing out on something here. I think uh, the key strength that we have is our focus on the on the demographic that we're, we're catering to. So that's a marketing play. That's a yep. customer demographic play. So the sort of Are question... they getting any better benefits of course. if they bank with you? Absolutely. So for example, if you're a student and you really want to know whether or not you have enough money to go out on a Thursday night, um, being notified with the location of every purchase that you've made so that you know, uh, you feel secure in that. But what's different from opening up an app on my phone, I can see my bank balance straight away and I know exactly all my transactions. Am I missing something? We, we did a survey before we did any of this for 2,000 people, university students, our users, and we asked them, what's your, well, how do you save money? Um, the answer is 40% of them, 43 actually, came back and said that their saving strategy was, I don't look at my bank account. So... <laughs> what, what do you mean? If I don't look at it, I won't spend it? They, they assume they just use their card until it stops working. <laughs> Sounds like you surveyed my children. <laughs> <laughs> the no, funny you're thing... talking about the Bank of Papa. The Bank of Glenn, yes. <laughs> you know, it's not actually students. It's actually people between the age of 18 to 25. That's our target demographic. Right. One of the features that they were most excited about was just knowing, for example, at the end of every week, um, we tell them, here's how much you have to spend in fund money, and here's how much you have to spend, you know, in terms of real money. So things like rent or textbooks, yep. etc. The fact that we do that for them is, I guess, the, the differentiator. It's not just saying, for example, you know, hey, you've spent $500 this month on textbooks. It's more like saying, uh, hey, did you know you have $100 that you can spend on going out with friends? And that difference, I know it sounds subtle, but from a millennial's perspective, that's the difference between them looking at their bank account versus just hoping that they have that money. So I just want to get to the bottom of your numbers now so we understand. Last year, we did $10 million of transactions in Australia. So in terms of revenue, the way we make money at the moment, we take a clip off every transaction and we have affiliate relationships. Um, so for example, we sell merchandise on our platform. So people can buy things like hoodies, beanies, gowns, etc. Of that $10 million, how much did you get? Um, so last year, we made $220,000 of revenue. Um, the year prior to that, it was around 56. So we, we grew quite rapidly in the first year. In the second year, we kind of realized that, you know, we're getting as many societies as we can, and so that's when we went to the UK. So this year, we anticipate that most of our growth in terms of actually existing revenue. So why do you think the UK is going to be a bigger source of revenue? So we, we essentially More you know, started to run out of customers in Australia, and the UK is three times larger than Australia. Yeah. So Australia. 150K uni students, you said you had, was that right? So yeah. it's 150,000 monthly active users. Um, what, what led you to the genius impression that you'd, you'd, you'd top the market? Um, sorry, I, I was referring to the student uh, societies rather, rather than the actual students. Right, so your marketing yes. channel in the university is through the yeah. societies Correct. and the clubs and the, right. and the Which is incidentally lines. another piece about why this we think we can do this better than anyone. It's a factory of, I guess, students every year because we have these societies. So, you know, the, the law societies or the biology societies. When students first come to university, they typically sign up for those. So the committee says to the students, please download the app and then we can... Yes, you can buy, for make, example, make a ticket to our event or... or do whatever. So that, that's your wedge, that's actually okay. the thing, you wedge in the door to get access to the students yeah. and then actually sell them further financial yeah. services. And in the UK we're growing out 3.4 times faster in, than Australia. You, um, you're growing three and a half times yeah. faster. Yeah. Where are we going to be in three years from now? We think that we can probably get around 50% of the market of students in Australia in the next three years. Yep, which means? Which means it's probably around 500,000 students. Which means? Uh, which means that they would probably be transacting around four or five times every month. And in terms of the average transaction amount, you're probably talking about $92. That's what it's been pretty solidly. That's 180 million bucks a month. Uh, it, it sounds about right. Holy shit, that's amazing. Mo, Andrew and Zach are taking on the banks with a high-tech play for the millennial market. And there's big money in it. That's 180 million bucks a month. Um, it, it sounds about right. Holy shit, that's amazing.
keep going. I'm starting uh, to get excited. Realistically, we definitely think we could be making four or five million of revenue a year. Um, what sort of cash dropping at the bottom? Uh, probably around 50%, give or take. Um, be a very high margin business, yeah. Two million and climbing fast. I'd hope so. All right, I'm in, guys. I'll take, I'll take the lot for what you want. Um, 380k for 8.4%. Um, Fantastic. That's awesome. With any of the other sharks? No, no bites <laughs> from the other sharks. <laughs> You're actually really impressive. There's, there's, you, you, I can't fault you. But for this one, I don't understand tech bells. They Fair just enough. blow my head. <laughs> You've got a great offer. I'm out. Awesome. Thanks, Janine. Thanks, Janine. What are you thinking? Yeah, look, I, look it, it, fabulous pitch, guys. You have all the answers. You're very impressive, young guys. Um, I've got three other fintech investments out there at the moment. Um, so for that reason, I'm out. Thanks, Thanks Rafa. I'm interested, definitely interested. 8.4% is not very exciting. Would have liked a bigger chunk. But I mean, you're impressive. But I think on balance, I'm just not compelled. Uh, I wish you luck, but I'm out. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Andrew. Well, and there was one. You can just take mine and ignore her, because, you know... <laughs> I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs> $380,000 for 8.4% of your business, which is what you asked for. We definitely think that we need a female presence. You know, the, the more people, the better. Steve and I never work together. Is that what you're asking? You're asking for two sharks. That would okay. be that would be beneficial. I'm, I'm not uh, uh, that greedy with this deal. Um, I'll take the lot, or I'll take uh, a 50% part thereof of what you're Who asking you for today. you work with me? <laughs> <laughs> I won't work with Naomi, but she can have half of my investment. We'll have separate board meetings if, <laughs> if you need to be kept apart. You guys must be very special because Steve said he would never work with Naomi. This could be the first oh, wow. ever. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm oh, in this conversation. I haven't agreed to it yet. Yeah, but again, for, for what it's worth, we definitely value the relationship. If you guys are really doing what you say you're going to do, then um, it's, it's a believable story of which I'm buying. I absolutely see this as a market that, it, you know, is, is our future. And I wanted to be associated with that. And that is the only reason I'm accepting to go halves with Steve. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Naomi can drag along behind me. That'd be fantastic. OK. <laughs> Good on you. Well, So awesome. do we have a deal? So do we have I a think deal? we have a deal. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Martin. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thank you. 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 And the best part of it is to see you two working together. Oh God, it's no. amazing. <laughs> so I'd like to see a big hug between you two. That would be... No. You'd like to see it, but guess what? <laughs> You're going to be disappointed, buddy. Next into the tank is a savvy 17-year-old who's not letting school get in the way of his sweet entrepreneurial dreams. My ultimate goal for my business is to be a household name throughout the world. Age is no barrier. Cool pants. <laughs>Hi Sharks, my name is Morgan Hipworth. I'm 17 years old and I'm the owner and founder of Bistro Morgan, an artisan donut store based in Melbourne. Oh, oh, no. oh no. Today I'm here for $200,000 in exchange for 20% equity in my business. Bistro Morgan was born when I was 13 years old and I started supplying a cafe with local goods. From there, things just kind of blew up. I was featured in numerous media outlets, and a whole whirlwind of opportunities came at me. 
I ended up supplying around 20 cafes around Melbourne until I was absolutely desperate on a permanent store. And my parents being, you know, parents, they were like, no, you're not allowed a permanent store till you're out of school. <laughs> so we came to a compromise that, how about we do a pop-up store? And before they knew, I was on the front of real estate agents and had already <laughs> sorted out a location for my store. And the eight days went so well, we ended up selling over 10,000 donuts in oh those eight days. Oh my goodness. So from there, the store came up for permanent lease. I eventually convinced my parents after many arguments at the dinner table. <laughs> and the store's been open around 15 months now. We continue to supply around 10 to 20 cafes and dessert bars around Melbourne. So yeah, it's, you know, keeps me busy as well as being in year 12 in high school. So I'm in my final year of school. So I think now's a good time to maybe try some of the dough. Oh, oh, well done. Well done. Thank you, Jenny. Well done. Well done. Well done. Yes. Amazing. Now, fess up the goods. Yeah, let's yeah. try, let's yeah. try, let's right. try them. <laughs> so we got our cookie monster, which is filled with cake batter. This is our class clown, which is filled with chocolate hazelnut and then Kit Kat and marshmallow. A Bruno Mars, which is Mars bar and salted caramel. Triple T's, which is choc hazelnut, Tim Tam. <laughs> <laughs> Date night, which is white chocolate, popcorn, caramel and choc hazelnut. And then our gay time crunch, which is based off the ice cream, the golden gay time, and made into a donut. My favourite. I'll have that one in the middle there, this one here. Thank you. The Excuse class clown. Thank you. Class clown. That kind of uh, suits I'll you. I'll take the middle one. Yeah. Thank you. See? And that's got cake batter in it. Cake is that batter right? inside, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well you can't you're going to knock, right? knock yourself out, knock yourself out, right? You sell it with a syringe, Yeah, too. exactly Tastes right. right. Tastes really good. And who comes up with the recipes? So you were, are asking for 200000 yep. for 20% valuing yep. your business at $1 million. That's right. Quite That's that not program. a bad ask for a 17-year-old. When you get $10,000 worth of sales, how 10,000 donuts. 10,000 10, 10, 10, donuts. donuts? Yeah, and the donuts are five fifty each for retail. Oh. Oh. 55000 on your opening weekend in a uh, pop-up. Opening at eight days, yeah. It must have shut Mum and Dad down, did it? <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I work about 60 hours a week on the business, and oh, then I'm also in, in school. <laughs> Take me through your day. A normal day? OK, so a normal day would be I get up around 4, 4.30, um, head down to the shop, get some of the orders and the wholesale orders out, and then from there I'll head off to school, and I get in, get all my homework done in recess, so I try and work through all my recesses, all my lunch breaks. You're working harder than most people I know. Amazing. Yeah. When do you have fun? This is fun. Oh, good This is what good I answer. absolutely oh, love. Great answer. <laughs> So can we do the, your current financial performance first? So our total revenue for last calendar year was $500,000, with net profit 130. Wow. This year? Four, yeah, four houses, 850,000, and then three to 350 profit. <laughs> oh wow. Did you clarify for us what you're going to spend the 200,000 on? Yeah, I'd love to have. Bistro Morgan flagship stores. Our product is one of those that people will travel for. Listen, uh, Morgan, I I'm already a shareholder in a pretty substantial national donut business, and I I'm not sure I'm the right partner for you to scale this next stage. I think you are a force of nature. You're Thank amazing. You. Thank you. But I'm out. No worries. And Morgan, um, you know, for a middle-aged guy who's trying to keep his weight down, I'm really <coughs> concerned about this product. <laughs> Dangerous, eh? <say. laughs> That's a good answer. What I notice about my investments lately in the food space is they are in health and wellness products. Yeah. So, for me, I'm out. Yeah, no worries. Morgan, I think you're at such a delight Thank you. and such an energy, and um, I'm sure your parents are incredibly proud of you, yeah. and they should be. Uh, it's not an obvious fit for me in terms of the value that I can add. For this deal, I'm out. No worries. Morgan, if there was one person in Australia. Yeah whose business you love, that you'd love to spend an hour with, who would that be? Um, Janine Ellis. There you go. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mate, you can have that. It's 
So, I'll make you a deal. I will offer you 200,000 for 42%. Oh, oh. <laughs> bottom feeder. Come on, easy. The reason easy being kid. is this oh. is going to take me a lot more time, so I'm actually valuing in my sweat. <laughs> He's a miner. He can't deal inappropriately with miners. What are you doing? Come on now. <laughs> hey? Are well, you in or out, Steve? Well, so um, the deal I was looking at was uh, $200,000 for 30%. So just to summarise, Janine's offered you 200,000 for 42%. Steve has offered you 200,000 for 30%. Is 12% of the business worth the expertise Mate, 42 that is, I've brought? 42 is horrible. You, you cannot do... Four, I, I ban you. I, I forbid you from doing 42. Is 12% worth the 20 years' experience that I can bring to you during this business? Morgan has landed two sharks willing to invest $200,000 in his donut empire. But they want a much bigger bite of the business than Morgan's proposed 20% stake, with Steve offering 30% and Janine sitting on 42%. I can't... I, I couldn't bear to give away 42% of my own sort of... You're not giving it away. No, no, I know, no, no, it's uh, not, I'm not, I don't mean I'm giving it away. I'm buying it I know, and I know, also I know. I'm giving you my time. I know, I know. She's ruthless. I think that's yeah. a no. She's ruthless. Make a counter Can you do though. any better? I'm at 30%, Ooh. mate. I'm at 30%. May I go back and have a chat with my mum and my dad? Absolutely. All right, no worries. I'll be back. Have a chat. Thanks. I'm not to. <laughs> Janine, he's not going to give you 42%. Well, he can come back for the counter. Hmm? You're worthless. I'm going to get you next yeah. to Dad. Yeah? Hey, it's me. Hi. Oh, good night, mate. We've got two offers. We've got one from Janine Ellis um, yes. for the 200000 but it's for 42%. I yeah. think you know how I feel about that. Yeah. And then we've got one from Steve for 30%. I think that they're getting uh, something pretty easy. That you've got to stick with 20%. Uh, you don't move to that. Here he comes. Right, here we go. Oh, his mum. Ah. Mum's crazy. I can see it. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. You are? I'm Ali. I'm Ali. Morgan's mum. Hi, Ali. Uh, how are you? Good, thank proud. you. A proud mum indeed. Yes, yeah, he keeps us busy. He keeps <laughs> you busy. <laughs> and challenged. And yeah. challenged. But yeah, we just call my dad as well. Oh, too. good. Yeah. So you consulted the board, I get that? We did. Yeah. So just to remind you, Janine's offered you 200000 for 42% of your business. Yeah. And Steve has offered you 200000 for 30% of your business. So what are you going to do? So we've had a bit of a chat. My dad was pretty firm. <laughs> uh, so he thinks that I'm a worthwhile investment as such. So would any of you be willing to do anything for 20? 20% a no. I will do 33%. I know this. I have lived every up, every down, every tier. So I think you're getting me cheap for 33. Steve, are you going to revise your offer? Um, I'm not. Cha I'm not changing my offer. Okay. So what are you going to do? Morgan, you're allowed to counter. Yeah. Janine, would you do 25 percent, please? Just go into the 20s. Please, oh. Janine. That it's Don't get on your knees, whatever you do. <laughs> I want to do the deal with you, but for, for me, I'm, I'm not prepared to move at all. If you walk away from here, I will still spend time with you. I don't want you to feel that it's bad. Yeah. I actually know that what I've offered is actually a good deal, yeah. but I don't want you feeling that. So you've got me either way. 
but you can have me as an equity holder yeah. or you can have me as a mentor. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't feel comfortable going above the 20% mark at this point in time. I, I can't go yeah, below. Yeah, that's okay. But I will still spend time with you. Yeah. We would love to take you up on having a you know, relationship. Mate, you've got me. <laughs> and who knows, I might be an equity partner. Yeah, no. somewhere down the track. Right. But I will definitely, definitely, Thank definitely you. be catching up. Thank you, Janine. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Amazing no presentation. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, Thank well done. You. Great to meet you. Thank you so much. So, Morgan, well done. Go out of here proud of what you've done. Thank Bye. you so much, guys. Great to meet you. Good luck with Bye. Bye. Take care. Thanks, Morgan. He would have been better off having you as a partner and he will grow faster. No, so, no. Thank I you, Andrew. We'll I find, agree with that. I think he will find he will do OK. I'll help him. I'm real happy to have Janine as a mentor. She's got so Fantastic. much experience in the food sector and yeah. it's just absolutely amazing to just pick her brains. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>